Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is the Choosing Wisely campaign and orthopedic surgery recommendations. So to review briefly yesterday's video about the Choosing Wisely campaign from the American Board of Internal Medicine, this campaign is meant to guide conversations between patients and their physicians. When they're making decisions about treatment, they want to make sure that it's evidence-based, that there's no duplication of treatment, that there's no harm in the treatment or test, and that the test or the treatment is necessary. Okay, those are great conversations to have. Now, more about choosing wisely. They actually, the American Board of Internal Medicine actually went out to 80 different specialties like cardiologists and orthopedic surgeons and OBGYNs and dermatologists and they said, hey, for your specialty, what do you recommend? We as internists, we can't recommend things for your own society or for your own patients. You recommend it. And guess what? All these different societies came up with 550 different recommendations. Okay, that's fantastic. Now, let's take a look at some of them specifically as they pertain to the types of claims that are generated by employers, right? And so the three largest areas for employer spend are cardiac, musculoskeletal, and cancer. So let's examine cardiac to start. So from the American College of Cardiology, they said that you do not need a stress test imaging, which is like a nuclear scan or sometimes it's an echocardiogram uh, scan stress test, if you don't have any cardiac symptoms and you don't have any high risk markers for heart disease. And they said the reason why they're making this recommendation is because 45% of stress tests for screening are really unnecessary. Okay, well that's helpful, right? Because here we're getting to the root of unnecessary care and the American College of Cardiology is making a stand and saying, look, in these situations, you don't need to do stress tests. Okay, now let's move on to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Now, they have five specific recommendations that I'm going to very briefly go over. One, they recommend that post-operative ultrasounds for deep vein thrombosis or, or DVT, which is a blood clot in the leg, after either a total knee replacement or a total hip replacement is not necessary. In other words, if the person doesn't have any symptoms, you don't have to do an ultrasound looking for a DVT. Okay, great. Number two, no needle lavage for knee osteoarthritis. In other words, you don't need to stick a needle into the person's knee and wash it out if they have osteoarthritis. Doesn't do anything. Okay, next up, no glucosamine chondroitin for osteoarthritis of the knee. Many of you are probably familiar with this medication and a lot of people take it for arthritis, but they're saying, look, for knee osteoarthritis, doesn't work, not recommended. Okay, next up, no lateral wedge insoles in your shoes if you have medial osteoarthritis of the knee. Okay, like, I don't think there was like a scourge of like insole overuse, but they're saying, don't do it. All right, fine. Lastly, no post-operative splinting for carpal tunnel release uh, surgery long term as it really is not helpful. Okay, those are the five recommendations. Okay, now when we think about orthopedic surgery, we think about like things like imaging, like should you or should you not get an MRI to look at your knee injury? Okay, no recommendations about that. Okay, about actual arthroscopic surgery, uh, surgery or about actual total knee replacement surgery or about actual total hip replacement surgery or about spine surgery because orthopedists do a lot of spine surgeries as well. Guess what? No recommendations about that. None whatsoever. Now, interestingly, there is a Canadian equivalent of the Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. They do have recommendations pertaining to imaging and uh, arthroscopic surgery, but the American ones, not so much. Now, there was even an article that quoted an orthopedic surgeon from Indiana University in America that said that, look, they, the, the AAOS chose stuff of no material consequence that nobody really does, according to Dr. Rickert from this article. So the point is, is that the really substantial stuff pertaining to value, when employers spend all this money and their members are going through all of these joint replacements and spine surgeries and imaging and minimally invasive arthroscopic surgeries, like, where is the stance of the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery on that? And the answer is, there is none. Now, the point is, not every single orthopedist in America is in line with the AAOS. Okay, so there certainly are orthopedists that practice high value orthopedic surgery in evaluating these things and having conversations with their patients in regards to these things prior to surgery. But when it comes from a leadership perspective, there is, there is no, no guidance from this group 
as it pertains to musculoskeletal tests and procedures. Now, I'm not, just, I'm, I'm not incriminating orthopedic surgeons. I mean, the, you can say the same thing about cardiologists and many of the other specialists as well. And so my point is, is that if we're looking for leadership around value in healthcare, that if, if anything, choosing wisely, has actually tried to do that. And let's just say we're not there yet. From a physician leadership standpoint, we are not there yet. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.